Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the workshop. In today's video, we have an incredibly early Series 2 U2332 Hoover Turbo Power. Try saying that when you're drunk. Uh, let's see if we can get it working. Now, I didn't know that there was actually uh, early and late versions of this particular machine. And it's only after watching my friend Sam Sam's video that um, I realized that you can actually tell an early from a late one. So an early machine will have Hoover written in green and a painted height control knob. There are a couple of little differences as well. Let's have a quick look at the bag throat. Now on Sam's one, here where the um, little tube connects to the bag throat, it has a metal clip on. This one doesn't have that. This is just like a, a right angled push in, but it's interesting the plastic is white um, and they're normally black. And here, if we check out the serial number, so it's U2332603. So that dates it to March of 1986. And 86 is the first year that uh, these Series 2 machines came out. We've got quite a few pro problems to address on this cleaner. Number one is it doesn't have a cable fitted, so we need to fit a new cable. Number two, um, the motor is completely seized up. I can feel that the... Uh, the brush roll is moving on the belt, but uh, the motor's not turning. So rather than risk any damage and put a cable on it and fire it up and s stick some volts up, up its bum, um, we could damage the motor. So we want to take the motor out first and have a look at that. Uh, and also as well, the um, the bag door, uh, sorry, the rear assembly does not stay up. So obviously that should stay up um, and then you push the pedal down to release it, but that doesn't happen on this one. So we've got quite a lot of faults on it. We've got a lot to do. So with that all being said, let's crack on and see if we can save this uh, 2332. Let's go. First thing we want to do is detach the bag door, which is really, really simple. Just get a big flat screwdriver, get it in here, push these clips through. Goodness me, that is as you like they normally go really easily but this one it's fighting but now you can pull the bag door off like so and that's that detached and out of the way it's going to be much easier to work on this machine if we can get the handle off so let's get that out of the way as well we need to go in here anyway because we need to put a new cable on the machine so it's just easier if we just take the handle off two screws and that will pop off. Um, be interesting to see if the two speed switch still works. It's had quite a lot of use because it's actually worn out. Just let me bring this down. Amazingly, the rear cable winder is still, sorry, the lower cable hook is still intact on this and it's the correct one as well, it's the correct color. The machine's absolutely filthy, it's really bad. But here's what I was saying about the, uh, the two speed switch. So you have one, zero and two written on it and they're almost completely worn out. So yeah, this machine has run for many, many hours. And it looks like more in speed position two than one because one is still, well, you can kind of see it. Let's take the bag throw out. This is really nice and easy on the tip of powers. I'm just gonna put all my screws over here. I don't need to label the screws. I've done so many of these that I know where the screws go now. I can just do it by memory. So take that off, there we go. Remove the bag throat, put that on the pile. It's interesting, it's got like a green cable that runs down here. The cable cover is actually green. I've never seen that before, it's amazing. Um, and now we want to remove this top cover. That's a series of screws. cover comes away like so and you can tell this is an early machine because it's got a suppressor here and they stopped doing this and that's quite interesting actually so with that needs to go but first of all, we need to remove what's left of the cable oh wow there's a grommet there as well look at that never seen that before there's a grommet interesting let's get this bit of cable out of the way there we 
Okay, we'll pop that in the bin. I have to get rid of this suppressor, which is quite easy. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, typical. So it's crimped onto the wiring. That's all right, that's fine. We'll just snip those off, actually. We'll snip it off. There we go. Get rid of, gets rid of our suppressor. That's gone. So we can pop these back in. Slightly awkward angle like this. Come on. Actually, I'll take that off. It's easy to do it if I can see. now ready for our new flex when we get around to putting it on. I'm not going to do that just yet. That'll be the, probably the last thing I do, actually. Cool. Now we need to remove the lower cover plate. Oops, sorry. <laughs> this is very awkward doing it like this. Then we get rid of the lower cover plate, and that comes off like so. Put the screws over there, put that on the pile. So, okay, this is good. So now, um, what we're looking for, I'm just gonna move you. What we're looking for is any damage to the body here, uh, which would suggest that uh, something's actually happened on inside on the chassis, rather than this being all be being fractured, which is which what what's, makes the turbo power lean. Um, in such a horrific way and also not stay upright but this is actually looking quite good this is all solid plastic here um, there's no cracks there's no problems at all which is brilliant this is looking quite positive first thing we'll do is just run the bench back over it just give this a bit of a clean up is very stiff but amazingly it's not broken at all it's absolutely fine we're actually doing quite well here this is good so now time to get the hood off and get into the motor let's see what's going on in there and also why the back body doesn't stay up first thing to do is to remove the height control knob now this can be tricky because these are, this has obviously been on here a very long time um, and what you don't want to do is break anything so let's try oh there we go that is Amazingly good, actually. The white paint is still pretty much all there. It's um, yeah. Normally they're completely worn away by this time, but that's that's actually great. Amazing. Put on the pile. Now I've got four screws to undo. And we can take off the base plate, like so. That's, okay. That's also surprisingly good. That might have been replaced at some point, but nothing is broken on it. Incredible. Now we can take out the brush roll. I'm just gonna suck that out a little bit. This brush roll is very, very worn. You can see that the um, the bristles are really low on it. Uh, and actually there, if you look there as well, look, the belt has been digging into this. 
and this should this should not be that shape this is a really bad 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 shape i think we might actually have to replace this brush roll uh which is fine i think i've got one in my spares but yep yeah, i will see if i can find one but until then let's put this on the pile just need to get this belt out of the way there we go so we've got two screws one here one here in the suction path and that then releases the hood let's get that out of the way there we go so we can now get into the machine and if i the motor pulley is turning ever so slightly we have a big motor problem here but that's all right it's nothing we can't fix with everything having been undone underneath we can now take the hood off like so, and that reveals our motor. I'm going to put the hood on the pile. Let's move you up a little bit so you can see better. Here's our turbo power motor. I wonder if this is the original light bulb. I'm going to bet money that it is. And it's knackered. Yes, not a surprise. Yeah, it is. It's the original. I wonder if you can see that if I try and focus the camera. Probably can't focus that close, but there's a Hoover symbol on the light bulb. So that's the genuine original Hoover bulb in there. But yeah, it's knackered, so no good. We can't use it in the bin. Um, and now we need to, uh, yeah, this is interesting. This is different. This is very different to what we normally see. Where's my screwdriver gone? This is always the problem. I always lose tools. I put it down and I can't find it. Where did it go? There it is. It's hiding from me. It's back there. So this wiring is uh, slightly different to what you normally find. Um, because the suppressor was up, up up the top there where the flex came in. I'm just going to move you a sec. What we have here is a different loom. So you see where the wire, this um, green, which is fascinating to me, cover comes in. We've got two wires here. We've got a neutral and a live. So the live goes to the motor there. Normally on turbo powers, the suppressor is here in this section on the motor. And this wire is much shorter, so it comes through um, and it stops about here or here and then it connects to the motor and then a couple of other wires run off to the actual um, motor circuit itself. So seeing it like this is very odd. So we need to do a little bit more work here. There's the snips gone, there's the snips. So we just need to cut this, like so, get that out of the way. And now we can Take these off, take the live off, take the neutral off, get that out of the way. And we can now take the motor out, which is really easy. So two screws, one here and one here. And the majority of the turbo power screws are all the same, so that's really good. And then you have this little plastic piece here, which holds the fan, fan casing in place. And that's it, now we can take the motor out. the motor out there we go we'll have a look at that in a sec and if you remember I was saying about the uh, machine not standing upright there's a problem here this is what is causing that problem so I'm going to move you again so you can see it better and what's happened is over time this screw has come undone and this screw holds this bracket in place so all we need to do is do this screw back up nice and tight this bracket's okay, and then, there we go, the back body stands up and holds it in place. And actually that is pretty straight as well, I'm really surprised, that is absolutely spot on. That's really great, so that's one of our problems solved. Um, but now we need to have a good look at the motor, because I think that's going to cause us more problems than uh, we may have anticipated. With the body out of the way and a bit of desk space uh, freed up, we can now take a look at this motor. And actually, if you wiggle it, it's quite stiff, but you can see the fan there. Actually, if we go this way, we just turn the fan. It's actually starting to free up, which is great. So we may be able to use the original bearings. We'll see how it sounds anyway. It's very, very lumpy. I'm turning it like this. It should be free flowing, but it's so lumpy. Now, we need to get into this. 
and there's some things you need to do. So first of all is snip this cable tie, like so. It goes in the bin. And now we undo these clips here. There's multiple clips all around the fan casing. So these need to come off. It can be slightly tricky, but we should be okay. That one, that one. Is the one under here? Yes. So we need to get this off. Push the bellows back. And do that one. There we are. So now we can pull apart the fan casing like so. And this actually makes it much easier to get the bellows off. If you try and get the bellows off with the fan casing still like that, it can be really difficult. But if you undo those clasps first, then take the fan casing off, it's so much easier. And I just noticed on the bellows where I said they were okay. Actually, they aren't okay. There's a hole here. Can you see that just there, that little hole? Um, so yeah, these bellows are no good. Oh, look at the lovely dirt falling out. Lovely. 34 years worth of filth. So yeah, these bellows are no good. They need to go in the bin. Gone. And now we can actually take a look at the motor a bit closer. Let's have a quick look at the commutator. Actually, the um, the camera's light is really quite useful for this. Let's turn this round and have a look at it. It looks all right, actually. It looks all right. I think with a bit of cleaning, we should be okay. Now, next stage. Oh my goodness, look at the cooling fan. Wow. Oh my God, look at that. This would have sounded absolutely horrendous. Look at all the filth on the, on the cooling fan there. That's incredible. I don't think I've ever seen one that bad. Wow, that is really horrendous. Okay, yeah, that definitely needs to be cleaned. Um, so first of all, we just take this uh, blue wire off. I think we'll take it off from this side. We'll take it off from the field. Like so, leave that there like that. Now we need to push the, um, the light bulb holder through. And we need some pliers. Where's the pliers? We've got our pliers, so we just push this out, like so, and now we can remove this section of the motor, and that will reveal to us its inner secrets. So there's four flat-headed screws in this particular motor. Sometimes they're Phillips, sometimes they're flat. We've got flat heads here, so we undo all of those. You'll notice I haven't taken the fan off yet. This makes things easier for us. So there is like a specific way of undoing these motors. There's an easy way and a hard way, and the easy way is to keep the fan attached. Mainly because it keeps the armature in place, and you don't get things like carbon brushes flying everywhere, like uh, uh, out of control. So undo those four screws, and now we take our rubber mallet and give it a bang. There you go. So that is the top section of the motor removed. This needs to clean. It's dirty. Get rid of those screws. Put them on the pile. Wow, look at that. Oh my goodness me. That is really bad. Yeah, you, you, you rarely see them this bad. This is horrendous. And what, what may have been causing this was the fact that the, uh, the bellows had a hole in, in, in them. Um, and if the bellows have a hole in them, um, it's easy for the cooling fan to suck the dirt in from the bellows into the motor and then it all gets caked around the motor like this this is yeah this is absolutely horrendous very impressive <laughs> you don't you don't see this very often um okay so now we need to take the armature out and for that we take the fan off so there's a really easy way to take the fan off and all you, all you do is you hold the cooling fan and you turn the main fan in the direction of the airflow so if it's pointing this way, you turn to the right. If they're reversed, you turn to the left. And that's the easy way to remember which way to turn it. This fan's actually a really good nick too. Um, it's quite surprising. It's got some dust on it, but actually there's no real damage to the veins. So yeah, we can reuse this, which is awesome. Uh, and now we can just get the armature out. Again, just take your rubber mallet, give it a tap and out it pops. So there's the armature and then make sure you keep these washers safe as well. Put those on the little part of the screws. I see all the dirt that's falling out of this motor, it's incredible. 
Um, now this being an earlier motor, um, it's actually wired. So the carbon brush holders are wired to the field. Now on the later machines, what you have is uh, a spade at attachment on the carbon brushes themselves, which run to here, like this top section of the field. And that's how they attached to the field core. But as I say, this is early. So it has these black wires running to the carbon brushes. It's tit for tat. Um, you know, you could say one's easier than the other. I don't think there's any real difference. Um, and here we have the carbon brushes. Yeah, my goodness, look. Wow, they're really, really worn down. That one is particularly worn down. I might have to put some more tension in the spring for that. It's quite small. Um, you know, obviously, obviously bearing in mind this machine um, it's, this is probably going to go into the collection because it's a really early one um, and I might sell my later one that I've got in the Hoover room um, so it's, it's not going to be used so these brushes it doesn't really matter about the brushes if I've got some better ones I'll put, I'll put them in I don't think I have which is a shame uh, but yeah they'll work it's it's all cool so now we need to clean everything up here and look at the state of my hands as well this is absolutely crazy so we need to give this all a good clean we need to clean the cooling fan as well. That is horrendous. Uh, so yeah, let's crack on with it. With our field core clean, we now need to clean the cooling fan. This is unfortunately much more manual than it is to clean the field core. And all you have to do, all you have to do, is go around each individual vein and push the dirt out. Now that's just on one vein. That is the amount of dirt that was attached to it. Imagine that spinning around at 25,000 RPM. It's going to cause a hell of a noise. So, nothing else to do but to work my way around it.
And there's the unbelievable pile of filth that we managed to pull out of that cooling fan. That is quite impressive. It's quite a lot. So let's wave goodbye to this. Now that the fans are all nicely cleaned up, we can do our usual trick of skimming the commutator using the drill. Here we go. That's looking nice, looking good. Yeah, pleased with that. All looking clean and fresh. Now we want to oil the bottom bearing. This doesn't feel too bad actually. It's slightly tight, but it's not too bad. I've certainly felt worse in my life. So let's pop some oil on this. There we go. Just run that in. Oh, there we go. It's much smoother already. Yeah, it doesn't sound too bad. It'd be interesting to see what the top bearing sounds like. No, that one's all right. Yeah, pleased with that. Now we need to oil the top bearing, which is here, and it's in, in, embedded into the fan case. So first of all, we just want to get rid of some of this dirt. So, and you cheat on this. So I'm going to pop the oil in, like so, and then take the armature, put it in this way, like so, and then work it through like that. It's much easier. It's much, much easier to, to do it this way. And there we go. That's freeing up. Yeah, that sounded pretty good. So put a drop more oil. Don't want to go too mad, but we do want it nicely lubricated. Pop it back in. Yeah, that's pretty good. Liking that. Lovely. So now we can put the motor back together. First things first, when you're going to reassemble a turbo power motor is bend back the carbon brush holders now be very very careful with these because they are very very thin copper and you don't want to go any further on these than you actually need to because the number of times in my life i've done this and i've actually snapped these little uh top sections off oh god i can't even think about it so they will basically only take one um, so when they're originally made they're bent in then we bend it out then we bend it in again and that's it they will take no more than that um, so whatever you do don't mess it up when you put the brushes back in because if you try and do it again they will snap off there's only a limited number of flexes on these so next we pop the armature back in like so which is good. Oh, do you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to clean this section of the motor. Let's do that quickly. So that's clean, which is good. You'll notice there's a spring in there. Now that spring puts tension on the armature and holds it in the correct place. Now we know that it needs to go like this. I think I'm pretty sure that's the way it goes. So pop it back on, push it together lightly. Just make sure everything lines up, which it does. So that's good. Give it a turn. 
Yeah, we expect that scraping because the field core is not held in place. Now we put um, the four screws back in. Now we have to do this in a specific order. So you do diagonals first. So you do this one and this one. So put these in first. It's very important at this point to give the motor a spin and make sure it's turning as you would expect it to, which in this instance it is. If it doesn't, then you know you've got something wrong somewhere. You've either caught a wire or something's not put back in the correct place. Um, whilst we're here, let's just pop this blue wire back on the field, like so. There we go. And we'll pop the lamp holder back in there. And now we can do the other two screws. So again, obviously we do a diagonal. Not too tight. Don't ever do it too tight. Give it a spin, yes, that's good, that's good, liking that. Now put your washers back on your shaft, like so. Then you want to put your fan back on, but we'll just give this a quick clean. Don't need to worry too much about these fans, they are quite hardy little things. And now we do it the other way. And what you want to do is get your screwdriver, put it in the shaft hole, sorry, the shaft slot, turn it to the left, and just hand tighten the fan, like so. so fan's back in place, and that is rotating much smoother than it was previously, so this is great. Now we need to put our carbon brushes back in. We're going to reuse the original carbon brushes. I'm not too fussed about this. It's actually nice to have the originality of the cleaner. So pop that in the carbon brush holder. There we go. Use the screwdriver to hold the spring down. And just ever so carefully bend this back into place. Like so. And don't touch it again because that will break. I promise you. Bop, bop. And now we put the other brush in, let's just clip that clean off with our fingers, like so. I'm going to just add a little bit of tension to this spring, just a little bit, not too much. And pop that back in the brush holder, like so. And again, take our screwdriver, hold the spring in place. And carefully bend the copper back and there we go so all things being equal and all things being good this motor should now run so let's give it a test now, for safety's sake i've just popped the fan casing back on because we really don't want that fan whizzing around close to our fingers whilst we're trying to hold hold the motor down and we just attach our speed connectors from the test lead, one there and one here. Now, all these being good, this should run when I plug it in. If it doesn't run, we have further problems. So I'm going to hold it there. Slightly tricky to do on this one. I kind of want you to see it working, but uh, I don't want to blow air in your face by the same token, actually. Uh, I need my right hand to turn the switch on. But okay, there we go. That that will do us, I think. Right, here we go.
that sounds pretty darn good actually. I'm really surprised. But those bearings will quieten down as well as they run more uh, and the, the oil goes deeper. But yeah, no, that's really good. So this is one working turbo power motor. Now all we need to do is get it back in the machine and find a bellows. So I'm going to find a bellows now um, and I'll be right back. As if by magic, here we go. Here's our spare bellows. So these are fine. Um, there's no splits or anything in them. A bit dirty, but that's right. They can be. They can always be cleaned. But yeah, no splits. So that's great. I just need to get the bellows back on the motor, which is always easy to, easier to do with the motor on the bench rather than trying to do it whilst it's in the machine. There's a top tip, so it goes that way, like so. Now we need to get the bellows on. Get the fan casing in there. Push it through, and there we go. So that's the bellows on. We'll put a cable tie around that, but let's get the clips in place. There we go. Then we'll get a cable tie around this. Is that's good. Now be careful where the end of the cable tie lands because you want it on the top here, you want it here. You do not want it there or underneath or anything like that because it can cause havoc when you put the machine sorry, when you put the motor back in. Um, and if that's in the wrong place, you have to redo it. <laughs> it's going to be famous last words, isn't it? Because I'm going to do this now and then I'll have to do it again, but I don't think I will. So let's just tighten the cable tie down. There we go. Cable tie tightened, snip off the excess. And that's great. So now our motor is ready to go back into the body of the cleaner. Here's our body back on the bench. So first things first is give it a bit of a clean out. to get the motor back in obviously it goes here so what we do is take the fan casing mount put that on the motor now the top tip for you is take a little bit of oil put it on your finger like so and just rub it around this mount here so you want that to be a little bit slippery not too much don't go mad don't drown it just a little bit there just to help the motor slide back in and also a little bit of oil just on the fan casing mount as well not too much just enough because it helps it slide into the body <laughs> anyway get that end in then the front end in push it down and there we go motor back in place how easy is that that oil trick i didn't know um back in the day when i was working on these things a lot um and it used to be a complete pain in the bum because the seals always used to get messed up and they'd end up all crooked oh, i was a nightmare <laughs> that and now we put the wiring back in Now we need a new bulb, and it just so happens I have some. Here's the new bulb that we're going to put on the 
machine. As you can see, it's a genuine Hoover, still carded. Probably quite a few years old. But yeah, this is going to go in and make it perfect again. We pop the bulb into the bulb holder, just at the front here. If it will go in. Okay, bulb fitted, and now we can put the hood back on. And with the hood back in place, we'll turn it over and we'll put everything back on underneath. Reassembly is incredibly easy. It's, uh, it's just backwards, as you would expect. There's no tips or tricks or anything, you just pop the screws back in. And we also need to find a belt. So I popped a replacement belt on there. I've also managed to find a replacement second-hand brush roll. You see this is much, much better condition than what the original one was. You can see there that, uh, my goodness, what a difference. And uh, the size of the bristles as well. This one is really great. This is a slightly later brush roll, but um, it'll still do it. It'll work fine. Let's get that back in. Okay, so the brush roll's driving the belt round, which is exactly what we want to see. And then we put the nozzle slash base plate back on. And that's as far as we need to go under here. So now we need to, to pop a new flex on. Putting a new cable on a turbo power is uh, simplicity itself. He says, struggling already. <laughs> okay, so get the new cable through the back of the body. And then strip off your wires. God, this is a tough old cab cable. I don't know where this came from. There we go. And easy this is such an easy job when I think about the Dysons and uh, how hard they can be with their ridiculous flipping cable ties and spade connectors and, and different routings for the cable well oh, they can be a right pain in the bum but this is nice and easy just slacken these off a little bit Nice and, you know when I said it was nice and easy? And you know how I keep making a, f a fool of myself? <laughs> I just have left this screw undone. Because it's so much easier to get the get it in when you can see. Oh, dear me, honestly. Actually, do you know what? I'll just do it like this. I like to fold the ends over most of the time, but actually trying to get these darn wires in is not uh, is not as simple as it may first appear. You can all laugh at me, it's cool, I don't mind. <laughs> actually, I might be able to get that one in now. Let's have a look. No, it really does not want to go in. Oh, dear me. Always famous last words, isn't it? Oh, it's so easy. You can do it really easily. Oh, man. Making me look stupid. My stomach's rumbling now. I need something to eat. 
I burnt all my energy doing this flipping turbo power. <laughs> okay, good. Right, that's that done. And get that back into place. At least it's connected up, so that's cool. I hope the flipping thing runs when I plug it in. I'll be devastated if it doesn't. Pull the cable out a little bit. There goes the grommet. That's odd, that grommet. I've never seen one like, like that before, ever. This grommet won't actually go back now. It's really strange. Oh, there we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Let me push it in through there. There we are. That's back in place. Okay, good. Good, good. We're making progress, making moves. Liking it. So let's get this cover back on. God, you know what? I'm really hungry. I don't know what I'm going to have for dinner tonight. I don't know what I've got in the freezer. I'll have to have a look. I'm just really curious to see if it works. I want to get it back together. Obviously because I want to get the video done. And I want to show you guys the machine working. I want something to eat and a shower as well. So make sure the bellows is firmly in place when you put it back. Make sure everything lines up because you don't want to take it apart. That would be a pain. Pop the cover in. Do the top two screws first. One here. Just get that done up. There we go. That holds the bellows in place so it doesn't pop out. Then the second one here. And one the final screw, which is down here. Lovely, that's good. Now we put the bag throat back in. Now obviously with the bag throat, don't forget to uh, reconnect the bag full indicator. I wonder if it works on this one still. Probably not. I had a habit of failing. But we'll see. Push it back in the bellows, make sure that tube is out of the way. Two screws up here. One there, and one here. Back for it back in. So whilst the end of the machine, the business end, is uh, suspended over the bench, I'm going to put the handle back on, like so, because obviously that, the handle has the switch in it. I'm just going to make sure that nothing is going to get sucked up and then shoot out. And we want to plug the machine in. Where's the end of the cable? Come on, it always gets wrapped around my chair, it's such a pain. So that is off currently. So let's plug it in, switch on. Now, what are we gonna see come out of here? Wow, would you believe that? The two speed switch still works. That's absolutely incredible. I am so surprised. I would have put money on that not working. amazing I am I'm genuinely genuinely surprised that that still works wow okay well let's put the handle screws back in whilst we're here Should we push that grommet down a bit that weird grommet that I've never seen before I'm gonna go and check my other machine and see if that's actually in there 
and that's it that's all our screws used so that's good so we know we put the correct amount of screws back in just need to get the bag door on and put a bag in let's do that now right let's get a nice brand new bag fitted fold this up two turns is always sufficient bag slide on oh i'm really excited to use this actually In now we reattach the bag door, which I'll do this way. Oh, I'm just going to vacuum this out a sec. Correct angle to do this at all. Naturally, no. No, 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 no. Do it properly. There we go. Good. There we are. Back together. Wow. That's really cool. I'm so pleased. Right. Let's turn it on and see if it works properly. Well, this is really great. I'm really pleased. Uh, so happy to have saved this uh, early 2332. Um, so this one will probably go into my collection once it's cleaned up. Um, it is absolutely filthy. It's all covered in paint. And I'm a silly sod because I should have cleaned the inside of the um, light lens before I put the hood back on. That, that is a top tip for you, by the way. Always clean the inside of this lens because you have to take everything apart again in order to get back into it. Um, so yeah, that's going to be my job for tomorrow. Um, yeah, just need to give it a really good clean. Um, yeah, really over the moon with it. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Always love hearing from you. Um, always interested to hear your comments about the vacuum cleaners tell me what you think about the 2336 and your memories of it it's a wonderful machine i've always loved the series 2 turbo powers um thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video we'll probably give it a clean the 350 is still waiting to be cleaned as well uh so they're all piling up but yeah i'll see you soon guys take care